Hi everyone, welcome, John here. And today we're gonna to be looking at virtual environments in Python, what they are and when you should be using them. So most of us these days will use third-party packages or modules imported into our code to help us achieve our tasks. Uh, we install these with pip usually, uh, but unfortunately the way that Python deals with these externally installed modules is somewhat less than ideal. They're all saved into one specific folder, and this is where things can get messy, especially with versions. So if you think about your whole computer as your environment, uh, which looks for Python installed when we run our code or start the interpreter, um, we can import our modules in and use them and, and go on our merry way. But let's say, for example, you're working on a few separate projects. So a good example of this is a web app, perhaps, maybe Flask or Django. Each project could potentially require different versions of the same thing to work. Um, this is where we would want to use a virtual environment. It's like a ring fenced off bit of our computer uh, specifically for that project that we can activate and deactivate that will control the versions of the modules and the packages that we use. Um, so we could have specific versions for each project. We may not want to use the latest version of a package available or maybe update it because a certain part of our code is written around the version X where it would need changing for version Y. So when should we be using a virtual environment? Generally, if you're working on a project larger than some basic personal use scripts or something that you would like to build upon or have some kind of longevity, it would be a really good idea to start using a virtual environment for those. And we should always be using one if we are collaborating on a project or building a web app that you're going to deploy elsewhere. So let's say you build your app that requires version 1 of Flask, but once you're done and you deploy, the latest is 1.1 and things have changed, potentially causing your app to break. Or say we join a project team um, and we are helping writing some code for a new functionality of their app. Um, we write it based off a specific version of a module only to find out that that's not compatible with what they've been using for the rest of the project. And this is why we use virtual environments. So how do we do it? Well, before Python 3.6, the way to go was PyEMV, but since 3.6, VEMV is the correct way to go about creating your virtual environments. And I would recommend that if you haven't already, you should update your Python to version 3.8 where possible. I'm using 3.8 and for the rest of this guide will be based on this version. So I will use VEMV. So I've created a test folder where we can see how to create, uh, activate and deactivate our virtual environment. To create it, we do Python dash M VEMV and then we give it a name. I'm going to call it VEMV just for simplicity's sake. Hit enter, let it run, and it will do everything it needs to do in the background to create our virtual environment. Now to activate it on Linux and Unix systems, you do source, then VEMV bin activate, hit enter. And we can see right away that the terminals change and we have the name, we have our name of the VEMV in the left hand side. This is what we've called our virtual environment, and because I called it VEMV, that's what we can see there. It's a simple way of doing it, it's quite easy. If you're on Windows, this source is command is different. You need to do name scripts activate.bat, and that will activate it for you. To deactivate, simply type deactivate, like so, and we can see that the terminal's changed again, and we're back into our main environment. We're not in our virtual environment anymore. So if we open up our Python interpreter, and it's worth noting at this point that if you have multiple versions of Python, you should be using Python 3, and if you need to do the Python 3 command, you should be doing that here, as well as Python 3-M. But because my version of Python is the latest one under this, this is how it works for me. So if I do here and I do import request, and this is in the main environment of my main Python install, so we can see that that's imported fine. So if I, if I come out of that and then I activate my virtual environment and do the same thing again, we can see I still have the same version of Python. But if I try to import this module, I don't have it. So what we can do is we can pip install, collect and install requests. And I'll just clear this so we can see. I'm still in my virtual environment. Back to our interpreter and import requests. Again, we see it works fine. So all I've done here is I've demonstrated how you can import and install outside and inside of your virtual environment. As I said, your virtual environment is your little ring fenced off area. So within that, I've just installed the request module uh, and then I was able to import it in. So if I come out of this again, clear the screen. Let's pretend that we're gonna be installing a Flask app and we're gonna be creating a new app. So let's do um, pip 
install flask and get that installed into our virtual environment and then let's do another one um, wt forms perfect if we clear our screen again we go back to our python interpreter we can see import flask works fine so what we can do here uh, and this is where it's particularly useful when you want to deploy is you can actually use pip to create a requirements.txt file for you which you can then install those versions of those modules into another virtual environment or another environment in general so if you think about your server or if you're working on another project you get sent the requirements.txt file you can just install everything you need directly from there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to type pip freeze and that will give us a list of all of the uh, dependencies for this project that we have created. So you can see there's some in here that I didn't install uh, specifically, um, but when you install requests, for example, it installs these other ones for you. When you install Flask, you have to have Ginger, it does it for you. But what we can do is we can do pip freeze, and we can send that to requirements.txt. That's done. Now, if I come out of my virtual environment, I can still see I have my requirements.txt file. So if I was to create another virtual environment here, and let's do python -m bmv, uh, and let's call this uh, Flask app. Let's create that. And although I'm creating this in the same folder, the principle is the same. You probably wouldn't do it in the same folder. Uh, now to activate that, I would do source uh, Flask app bin activate. This is because the Flask app is what we called our virtual environment. And we can see here that our terminal has changed over to this. So again, if we do Python, import requests, nope, import Flask, nope. But what we can do is we can take the requirements.txt file that we created from our other virtual environment, or maybe something that someone has sent us, and we can do pip install dash r requirements.txt. And there it's going to go install all of the requirements that we need for this specific project that we've created this specific virtual environment for. And now if we go back and to the Python interpreter, we can see that we have import flask, fine, import requests, all good. So hopefully that's helped you understand a little bit more about how and why you would want to use a virtual environment. Remember, it's like a, a separated part of your Python install, its own little instance that will help you keep your uh, versions that you need for your specific projects. Let me know in the comments if you want anything else clearing up or need to know a little bit more or anything in general. Cheers, guys. Bye.